Let me turn this on. There. I'm also going to be in. So if you've already on a question that someone has on the exam, you already know, then work on the new problems that I have. I'll put them up here. Um, but they're also, especially for those of you online, um, I put them on, um, on Learning Suite. They are under practice exams. And then I have the sheet here called exam one in class review. So Okay, who'd like to start us off with a prayer? Come on. How come this is not working? There. Okay, who'd like to start us off with a prayer? General conference didn't do much for you, huh? I'm just kidding. That's awesome. Go ahead. Amen. Thanks. Uh, speaking of general conference, any comments about general conference? Yep, it was awesome. Here, okay, over here. Okay, so that that uh, comment was that there. He and other people that he's talked to have seen very similar themes, like very strong themes across this conference, maybe stronger than others. What were some of those themes? Preparedness. All right, the pandemic can cannot make us not keep the commandments. Okay. Racism and civility, weeding out racism, right? Civility being unified. Okay, very nice. Others? Any particular talk that uh, comes out of you? That was powerful for you? Okay, we're all. Michael? Not only what is my focus, but also what is my focus in helping others in the ways that they need it. Is it a very short term, let me solve your problem, or is it helping you? Is it helping someone else to grow closer to God and, and be more willing to have forgiveness? Oh, great. Uh, I can't summarize that very well, but President Nelson's talk and talking about what. Uh, what Michael's doing, what he's doing to let God prevail in his life. I know it's a poor summary. Thanks. Um, any, we also have the devotional today. Any comments on the devotional? We've just two thumbs up. Spiritually fed. Michelle? Oh, that's right. So she did a, did a study with a colleague where um, here at BYU, how connected you are to other students on campus and most students, students within three classes, like the classes that you, the people that you're in classes with and the people that they're in classes with and the people that they're in classes with, you're connected to, most students are connected to half of the BYU students. So pretty phenomenal. So yeah, so it's, you get 16,000 people uh, that you're just three connections away from. So what's the Kevin Bacon thing? Seven degrees, Seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, it's like the three degrees of BYU students. So, so yeah, do you guys know what a Bacon number is? 
So it's like how many movies, how many movies away an actor or actress is from being in a movie with Kevin Bacon. So if they're in a movie with someone that was in a movie with Kevin Bacon, they have a Bacon number of so two. That must be two. If you're in a movie with Kevin Bacon, you have a movie with you have a number of one. So there's something similar called an Erdős number in mathematics. So uh, there's a very famous prolific mathematician. His last name was Erdős, and um, and if you have, if you've published with someone who published with Erdős, you have a number of two. I have an Erdős number of five and maybe four. So um, almost everyone has an Erdős number. He was so prolific. Uh, Natalie Portman is that her name? The actress. She has a, she has a, an Erdős number of three, I think. So she got a master's degree at Harvard, but. Uh, if you have a Bacon number and an Erdős number, you can add them together and that's your Bacon Erdős number. And very few people have a Bacon Erdős number. It's one of my goals in life <laughs> is to have a Bacon Erdős number. And uh, I have a friend, he was in the movie Footloose. It was filmed here in Utah. And so I just need to get, if any of you go into film, okay? If any of you want to film, let me know. I'll get me and my friend there, okay? Just put us in, just for a spot thing. And then I will have an Erdős number of two, and then I will have one of the lowest Bacon Erdős numbers out there of like seven. So there are people that have lower ones, but I would love to have, love to have a Bacon Erdős number. Okay, um, so the homework over here. So read uh, read 3.5 up to the section bases. You don't have to read past bases. Um, it's about row spaces and column spaces and just general subspaces. Uh, watch the 3.5a video. I haven't made it yet. I'll make it after class and put it up or send a link to Michelle. She'll put it up. Uh, do uh, 3.5a online homework. You don't have any written homework today. Um, and study for the exam. The exam starts tomorrow. It still isn't up yet on grade scope, but uh, Another professor has it up on his. I just have to figure out how to copy it over to ours and open it up. I will send out an email to everyone detailing uh, uh, of the details about the exam. Okay. Just clarifying, 3.5 is not on the exam. Right, 3.5 is not on the exam. Yep, it's only up through 3.3. So you will be taking the exam online. Um, there is a four-hour um, a four-hour window you can take it in. Uh, it's timed. It's, it starts once you open up the exam. So be prepared for that. It is unproctored, but it is not open notes or open neighbor or open internet and such. So um, I wish I would have known that before. I would have written a different test. I have, we all combined to write this exam, but um, if you do make take home exams, it's just usually nice to say, hey, it's a take home exam and you just write it as if you have access to that. We just let the students have access to everything, but this is not written as if you have access to everything. So cannot use computational devices, cannot use your textbook, cannot look up things online. Yep, 11.59 p.m. on midnight is when it ends. Does it, we, do we start it at 11.59? Then that's too bad. No, you can do it in a, do it in a minute, or, you know, I guess, I don't know. Okay. Uh, no calculators at all. Yeah, so no calculators at all. Okay. There's a math review for this text with the math last night, right? Uh, yes, I didn't. I didn't take note about when those were, but you should have got an email. I think there's two. Okay, five to seven. There's a. There is a review from. From they'll have a TA from the math lab giving that review. It's probably online. Is it online? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably online. Okay. Other questions? Braden. Yeah, so the exam starts tomorrow and goes until uh, Friday, 11.59 at night. So you have three days. I'm hoping to have it up uh, before I go home from work today. 
I mean, it won't open. You guys wouldn't be able to open it yet, but I'm hoping to have it up before then. Okay. Other questions? Um, is there a time limit? Four hours. So the time limit. It wasn't until like four C to do. Like we, we hope the time limit is just is. It's just to keep you from taking to, uh, two days to do the, you know, open it up and and look at it and take two days to finish it. We're not putting it to a big time limit on to like force you to do it in a, we hope it's not a time crunch, but it, it is reason, we think it's reasonable to have you do it in four hours, more than reasonable. So we're not trying to be mean by putting the four hour block on there. Um, okay, other questions? Okay. Yes. Just a real quick question. What's a homogeneous genius system? Okay, so the question is what's a homogeneous system? So it is if you have a system of equations or a matrix equation AX equals zero. So this if the right side is zero, we call it homogeneous. So homo means one or the same, so they're all the same. It's all zero there. So good question. So if we can pull up, do you want to pull up the, um, those questions? So, so right now I will take questions from the practice exams if you want to go over any of that. And um, if we're working on problems that you already know, then go ahead and work on these problems. Okay, you might want to take a picture right now of this with your phone or write down those vectors or something. Um, so, yes. Yep, it is. And you, you can write out um, on the free response, you'll just write it out on a piece of paper, take a picture and upload it like you do with your written homework. So that's how we'll do those problems. Yes, from what I understand, yeah, you'll just click on there. Click on the responses. Yep. Homogeneous. So, homogeneous systems. So, the question is what's the use of a homogeneous system? Homogeneous systems always have a solution because you could, if all of the values of your x vector, your variable vector, are zero, then it's always consistent. And we also use the homogeneous system to test. To, well, actually, to define whether the columns of A are linearly independent. Because, but well, we think um, if you have vectors V1, V2, V3, et cetera, up to Vn, then if there are only, the question is are there linear combinations of these that equal? So that you can get zero. Well, there always is. You can always take zero of this amount, zero of this amount, zero of this vector, et cetera. But if there is some combination where your coefficients are not uh, are not all zero, then they're linearly dependent. So. That's that property of that. You, there's always at least one solution here. Uh, we often end up using that. So, okay, tells us a lot about tells us a lot about a. If the if this is if there's only the trivial solution where all the x's are zero, or if there's other solutions there. Okay, other questions? Yes. Yep. So the question was, I just used the word consistent. Can I define that? So a consistent system. has at least one solution. Okay, so inconsistent has no solutions. And we could go further. So if it has no solutions, it's inconsistent. If it has at least one solution, it's consistent. There's two kind in linear systems that we've been working with, there's two kinds of consistent systems. You can have finite or you can have infinite, okay? So I both, whether it's, uh, 
what do you have? I shouldn't even just, I shouldn't say finite. You should just say one. Um, where's the, um, you have exactly one or you have infinite. So exactly one or infinite. So these are both consistent. Exact, if you have the solution, exactly one solution or infinite solution, they're both consistent. Great. Other questions? Um, well, I looked through it, but I can't remember. I didn't look at that particular thing, but it's probably 15 to 20. So the last two ones were 18, right? So, so something close to that. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Which one? Is it February 2020 or February 12th through 14th, 2020? It, what number? What values will make the matrix non-invertible? Okay, right, that's what you asked, right? What? Okay, so here's the problem. We've got a matrix. One, a minus two, 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 one, nine, one, S, five, oh, that's an S, that's a five, okay. And what values of S will make the matrix a non-invertible select one answer only? So what if it didn't give you choices? Okay, they do give us some choices here. It's multiple choice. What if they didn't give you choices? What would you, what could you start doing? Oh, I thought you were going to say cry. I'm just kidding. Okay. Plug, but what do you mean plug and chug? Just start testing it out. Testing it out how? How could, what, what information would we like to know so we could say, hey, it does have an inverse, it doesn't have an inverse. Well, like a one, one the Gaussian okay. So we could augment it with one, two, one, a minus two, one, S, Two nine five one zero 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 one zero 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 one. We could augment it here. Um, this will be more work than we need to do for this problem, though, because we don't have to find the inverse. We just have to find S so that it has an inverse. Okay. Um, oh, no, yeah, no inverse. I'm like inverse. You could probably randomly pick something and it would have an inverse. So that's why I looked it down. I was like, Inver that should be pretty easy. So yeah, which is not invertible. So we actually don't have to find the inverse, but we can still use row reduction. Um, who had their hands up? Okay, Michael. Yeah. So yeah, we just have to. Let's just start row reducing it, and uh, we won't augment it with that. We can just start row reducing it, and and search for a point where we can get s and make, make it so this row uh, is not a pivot row, right? And so, so hopefully we can get one there, one there. If we have one here, then it's invertible, but we should hopefully we can change S so that we can get that to be, so like this whole bottom row will be zeros. So, okay. Is that enough to answer the question or you, should we actually go through it? Okay. All right. Um, So let's work on, let's get rid of, uh, let's take two of this top row and add it to that second row. So we'll have zero, five, and S plus two. And then we'll take a negative two of this and add, keep track of my arithmetic here. So, okay. I'm lucky, I have all you guys to help me. You won't have anyone to help you on the exam. <laughs> Okay, negative two of this plus, so you get zero, negative two row one, so negative two, I'm gonna get a negative four plus nine, 
will be five and then a negative two plus the two, I mean a negative two plus the five is positive three, right? Positive three. So already we get to this point, what do we want? Yeah, if, it, if this is five three and this is five three, then one more row operation to get this to be zero, we'll make that bottom row all zero. Yep, so, so here S equals three is going to make it, um, S equals one. <laughs> yeah. Two plus S was three, that's what I was saying. So S equals one. Yep, and that'll make it non-invertible. Any other value will make it invertible because any other value will make it so this, so we have a pivot column. A pi yeah, pivot column there. Right, so if S is one, yeah, then now we have th these columns would now be a linearly dependent set. And these rows would also be a linearly dependent set. So, so the span, if this was one, then the span, what would the dimension of the span be if S was one? It would be two because we would end up having a pivot column we can re let's let me rewrite this. Zero five three zero zero zero. So if s if s was one, then you'd get this. We already see we have two. Can you can you grab my new mark my new black marker there? This marker's black marker's dying. Okay, we have two pivot positions. Okay, so we know we have at least we have two dimensions. This is a free variable. We don't. This is not a pivot column. So the span would be two dimensions. How many free variables would we have? We have one free variable because the number of free variables plus the number of of pivot columns has to add up to has to add up to the number of columns. So every every column that you don't have every column that's not a pivot column has to is going to be a, a free variable. Yes. If it's invertible, yeah. So. Isn't that a much nicer marker? Let's hear it for Michelle. Give her a hand. Thank you, Michelle. Um, one, two, nine, five. Okay, here we've got this matrix. If we can find another matrix, three by three, only square matrices have inverses. If we can find another square matrix where that we can multiply this by, so this would be three by three. And that we end up with the identity matrix, then this is invertible. Okay. And so, and it can be, we can multiply it on this side or we can multiply it on this side. Doesn't matter because the, uh, a matrix and its inverse do commute. So, and if this happens to be one, then there's no matrix you could do this to and get that. Right there, and then up here. It has to be that exact thing. It's got to be ones down the diagonal, square matrix, same size as these. And it's got to have ones down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. So, and the connection, the connection to real numbers is the multiplicative inverse. Does five have a multiplicative inverse? Yeah, it's the number I can multiply by five to get one. We have to get one exactly here, right? So. So uh, this is the equivalent of of one in matrices. So it has to be exactly that. Yes. Can you explain why that one and five are within pivot columns again? Yep. Uh, so the question is, can you explain why the one and five are pivot columns? So we could continue. Um, we could continue row reducing, and um, there's no way I could make this zero. I don't know if that's the best way to think about it, but if you continue to row reducing, um, I could make this one. I could use that one to get rid of this, but no matter what I do, I'm going to be stuck here. 
doing the if I continue through row reduction. And I'm going to get one, zero, something, zero, one, something, zero, zero, zero. Like I'm never going to be able to get an, a, a row of, I won't be able to get another row of zeros. Um, I think for this, we might have to go look at the definition of row reduced, but um, so it's the row reduced, you're going to have this, you're going to have this stair, stair step thing happening, right? It's the echelon, the stair formation. Um, you have, you, you want to have the first non-zero element in this row at the top. I mean, in this column up at the top, then the next one needs to go here. You have what the next one would go here, but we get a row of zero, so that's as much as we can do. Um, if it's three by three, yeah, if it's square, yes. Um, do be careful because you can still have, um, you can have a row of zeros here and not have infinite solutions. So don't, don't equate and not have a free, and you not have a free variable. So if you only have these matrices, okay. You've got this matrix, you've augmented it with something. Okay. Well, we have a row of zeros here, but there's still exactly one solution to this. Um, I have to have two of this column and three of this column um, to, to make whatever I started off with. But, so, um, yeah, there's still exactly one. This would correspond to. You're in three dimensions, but your columns that you started off with would span a plane in three dimensions, right? Like a slice through this room. And this point you're trying to get to, it is, it's in that plane. And there's only one way you can get to it. So many of your, your first column plus so many of your second column. Okay. So don't equate rows of zeros at the bottom to infinite solutions. So be careful of that. If it's a square matrix, yes, but, but not every time. Okay, other questions? Just to make sure I understand that, that is linearly independent of n fundamentals? Oh, so it, these columns, the, the columns of the coefficient matrix are linearly independent. Okay, it can't have an inverse, only square matrices have inverses. Okay, so if there is a row of zeros at the bottom, it would still not be linear. Um, right, okay. still wouldn't be, be yeah, it would, it would still be a non invertible matrix. Yes. So the reason why a like non square matrix can't have an inverse is it because identity matrices have to be squares? Uh, yes. So you can make what they'll make what are called pseudo inverses for non square matrices. And yeah, so so they, there is a way of extending it. But the idea of um, the idea of a, a matrix, one of the fundamental ideas of a matrix is that it preserves, it, it keeps all the necessary information to undo, undo your transformation. And, um, and if you get non-square matrices, you start to run into problems with that because you're changing a dimension. You might go from four dimensions to two dimensions and then you don't know how to match your points back. So, yeah. Other questions? This is fun. I love days like this. Um, I don't know. The question was, are pseudo inverses unique? Um, I would Google that. You got a computer in front of you, you might. You'll, you, you'll know more in one minute than I do about pseudo inverses. Okay, yes? So the question is, can we, can we go through the proof of if A, if A is a three by four matrix, uh, show that A times A transpose is a symmetric matrix. Maybe I'm just not understanding that, but like 
Is this on the an exam? It is. It was on oh, the great. Okay. Because I'm like in the homework, you had to do it for n by n or like m by n. So, okay. So it's a three by four. So we'll take a, and we'll call it a three by four. So this is a three by four. So I'm going to have three rows and four columns. So I'm going to call this a one one a one. To A13, A14. So I'm going to start with this one. I don't, I don't know of any theorems that are going to help me or other properties. Nope. So an A, a uh, you have to have a square matrix to call it symmetric. So so it can't be symmetric. So I, because I don't have any other tools like theorems that I could use to connect to to symmetric matrices, I'm just going to start writing out what A is um, with arbitrary elements. Okay, so so I, yeah, I'm not assuming anything about A other than they told me it was three by four. So two one, A two two, A two three, A two four, A three one, A three two, A three three, A three four, and so I'm going to multiply that by a transpose. Okay. So a transpose is going to be a four by three. Did it say a did it say a, a transpose or a transpose? A? A, a transpose. Okay. Both of them are symmetric. And you, the proof is very similar, but I just want to make sure I get the, the multiplication right. So a transpose, I'm going to have a a1, but now this one, I transpose it, right? So this is going to be in in this position, A21, A31, A12, A32. A32, and then A13, A23, A33, a one four, a two four, a three four. Okay, and now I can just start multiplying and see what I end up with. What size am I going to end up with? A three by three. So so I'll multiply this by this one, this top row by the second column, top row by the third column. I've only got three 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 products there. So yeah, the ins inner ones are four and four, but the outer ones are three and three. I'm going to end up with a three by three. So um, there's some notation that can save us some work, but I'm not going to save some work to, uh, to begin with. So let's do this first column times this. So that's a one one dot a one one plus a12 dot a12, okay? Plus a13 dot a13, plus a14 dot a14. I didn't do it big enough. That's only one column. That's only one, that's not even one column. That's just one cell. So, yeah. And so the next one over, the next cell over would be, this row dot this column. So A11 times A21 plus A12 plus uh, times A22. Plus a13, A23. We're doing, we're deforming uh, space here. A14, A24. Okay. Um, and so I could write that all out. And you notice that the thing that goes right here with, is this col this row times this column which is A21 times A11 
plus A22 times A12 plus A23 times A13 plus A24, which is exactly this, right? But this is, I mean, you can do this, right? This just takes time. What would be nicer to put right in here? <laughs> Don't use real numbers that ask you for a proof, right? You, you can show one case, but, but it doesn't always work, right? So, yeah, so you might call this, yeah, like row one, uh, the row one of A, and call this column one of A transpose. And then you could just write this as a dot product. And so, so then you can just write them as dot products over there. And then just to show that it's symmetric, you can say, well, look, if I transpose this, then I get the same thing. So you just have to show that these, right, these off diagonal ones have their, pa have their pair. So you might have to show that, I mean, you have, might have to say, hey, this column here, th I'm sorry, this row here, row two is the same as the column, you know, column two in a transpose. So, yeah. So, so if we do that, we can start saving ourselves a lot of space and say, um, so this is row one of a dot uh, column one of a transpose, which is actually the same thing, right? Um, plus row one of a dot uh, column two of a transpose plus row one of, of uh, a dot column three of a transpose. Okay, and then we could, this is row two of a dot uh, column one of a transpose, row two of a dot column two of a transpose plus row one of it, row two of a dot column three of a transpose and row three of a dot column one of a transpose. Why am I putting pluses in there? There's no pluses. Right? They're just living in their own cells. Okay. 3a dot c, two of a transpose and row three of a dot c, three of a transpose. Um, yep, but this doesn't look symmetric, does it? So not until you like relabel things. We could have relabeled things right at the very beginning and say, we're gonna call these row one, the row one, row two, and row three. And notice the columns here are this, you know, the first column here is the same as the row one there. So we could, so if we go back and we say, well, row one dot this, well, the column one is the same as the row one over there. So you can just start writing R's wherever you had, um, wherever you had a C and what do you get? So now, since dot products are commutative, right? You can flip those around. This is equal to this. This is equal to this. This is equal to this. So it equals itself. So it's symmetric. The transpose equals itself. So it's symmetric. So yes. That's right. So dot product, u dot v is the same as v dot u. So I can rewrite rewrite those. So, yep. Okay. Yes. Yes. So that's exactly. If you have three linearly independent vectors in R three, then you span the whole space. What problem is it? Okay. So he said, there's a problem where there's a three by four matrix and the answer, yeah, can you still try to figure, find that? Okay, so the question is that something that seems like it doesn't make sense. It spans all of our three, but 
the vectors are linearly, the columns of the, of the matrix are linearly, linearly um, dependent. So, and here we have a three three by four matrix. In a row of zeros. Okay. And what was the question associated with the, this matrix? Okay. The columns of A span all of R three, um, but what was the last thing? And it said that the columns of A span, it said it as a correct thing, the columns of A span R3. So this, this should only span R2. Like, I'm sorry, well, it shouldn't span R2. It should span a two dimensional plane because you only have two, uh, you only have two pivot columns, right? Here, here we have a pivot position here and a pivot position here. So we're gonna have two free variables a free variable here, and a free variable there. So we can only span the same dimension as we have uh, pivot, pivot positions. So what test and what problem is this? Yeah, but both mine say exam one on them, so it doesn't help. So. Um, Yeah, so yeah, I got it. So, so the two, the two solutions here, like you, this is a pick all that apply. The answer is the rank of A is two. Okay, so that's the third one down. So let's just go through all of them. The columns of A are linearly independent. independent. Is that even a possibility here? It's not even a possibility because um, so it's not because of these rows of zeros. So remember, you could have one zero 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 one zero. These are linearly independent columns, but we still have a row of zeros. So um, are they linearly independent? Well, um, the best I can do. We're in three dimensional space, right? So even if even if these three are independent. No matter what, that's I'm going to have a problem because then I expand all of R three and I've got that thing. And if these aren't independent, then then they're not independent. So so no matter what, even the, even if this one is independent of this one and this is independent of these two, then that's the most I could get in terms of independence in R three is just having three three vectors in R three. I've got four, so I've got to have some dependency somewhere. That's right. So these are not three equations, but we have three coordinates for each of these that we're living in R3. Yeah. I was just going to say something along the lines of if you have a free variable, doesn't that basically mean it's dependent? Right. Yeah. So if you have a free variable, then they're no longer dependent. So um, if you have, um, here we have the columns, uh, at least the columns are, are not dependent. Here we only have two pivot positions, and so we know we're going to have two free variables. Yeah, we're not not going to be dependent. Um, the columns of A span all of our three, so because we only have two, because we only have rank two, because we only have two columns that um, we have two pivot columns, we can't span all of our three. We need to have three. Um, we need to have three pivot positions because 
if we set this up as an augmented matrix, I could think of setting this up as an augmented matrix. And can I write down any, any set of three coordinates over here and, ha and get a solution based off of these? No, because any number I put down here, it's, if it's not zero, I'm in trouble. I have no solution. So I can't spin all of our three. So that's one way of thinking about it. Um, yeah, the other is I've only really got, all the information I really have is tied up in two vectors. And so I can only span a plane somewhere. Is this helping? Yeah. Okay. The rank of A is two. We talked about the system has three free variables. No, we only have two free variables. Um, the system is inconsistent. Oh, it does have an augmented matrix. Oh. Um, is the system inconsistent? Who, who asked the consistent, inconsistent? You're looking over at the definition over there. It is, why do you say it's consistent? It has at least one solution. We've got all these zeros here, we're okay. The only way you get a non -solution, no solution is if you get zeros equals non-zero. So there's still combinations, there's infinitely many combinations we could get of these things and, and get this and get this over here. So the system is consistent. So we're not going to click pick that the system is inconsistent. The system has a unique solution. No, we've got free variables. As soon as you get a free variable, you're an infinite. Well, if there's, if you, uh, free variable doesn't automatically mean infinite solutions because you still could have no solution. But if we're here, we, we don't have, we're not in the no solution case and we have a free variable, we're in the infinite solution case. And the system has infinitely many solutions. Yes, because we have, we, uh, we know we're, no, we're not in the no solution case and we have free variables. So, yep. But it like has infinitely many solutions in that plane of creators, right? Uh, right, so there's inf infinitely many, you infinite said. Three. Right, so in our, so, um, this is my three dimensional, here's the, Here's the X, here's the Y, here's the Z, okay? We're gonna have some plane. Um, oh, dang it. There's some plane in three dimensions slicing through here. In fact, Z equals zero, so um, X, Y is a negative two, so if we go, this is the negative, we're gonna have this plane that goes like this, and it goes through this point. So it's parallel to the Z axis, this way to uh, two units, if I've interpreted this right. And so all of our vectors, all of our vectors are, 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 are in this plane in here. Okay, so all four of those vectors are somewhere in here. So we can, we have lots of different ways to get to any point in this plane. So, yep. Um, so, so the question is, can any reduced echelon form go to, uh, can any row echelon form go to reduced row echelon form? Um, what do you mean, can it go? Like, can you reduce it to, like, can you reduce every row echelon form to a reduced form? Yes, you can always continue reducing. Um, a lot, um, a lot of times you get enough information once you get to just row echelon form. That, that's right. You just have every leading, every leading um, coefficient is to the right of any of the leading coefficients above it. And that's basically it, because then the, your zeros off to be at the bottom. Yep. So any of your pit, yep, you, we'd have to change this one to a one and we would use that one to make this a zero. So any, any pivot column is a one and all the rest are zero. Yep, same, the, yeah, the same structure, the same staircase structure. 
um, yeah, has that same kind of stuff as row echelon form. Did anyone work at all on the on the problems that I put up that I spent like an hour and a half preparing and everything? Okay, good. Like at least some of you were. Thanks. Yes. Uh, pretty much, but shoot. If they want to leave, they can leave. Okay. Um, I the solutions are below. So. So this, so all the solutions to the problems I put up there, they're on that same sheet. So in the onloading suite under the past practice exams. And if you just scroll down, I put all the solutions there working through. So if you have questions after going through those, yeah, please email me or something. Yes, Braden. Commute means you can multiply them in any order. Like you yeah. can have so this times this, exposed, or you can change change the, the position oh, and have this times that. Okay. So that's commutative. Like like multiplication is commutative because a times b is the same as b times a with the real numbers. It's not necessarily true know, right? for matrices. Well, they're Way to study so hard. I can tell you've been studying. You've got questions. Um, are we looking?